Understanding physics and this video is about uncertainty. Very, very important in A-level physics, in all the physics, uncertainty. Uh, if you're uncertain about what that means, let's watch this video. So what does uncertainty mean? Uh, how do we estimate the uncertainty in a measurement? Uh, how do we combine uncertainties? Uh, and how do we minimize uncertainties? That's what we're going to cover. So imagine this. Imagine you drop a ball uh, and you measure how long it takes to fall using a stopwatch. Uh, and according to the stopwatch, it says 0.45 seconds. Is this the true value? The true value is how long it actually took. OK, uh, we have our measurement of 0.45. That's the measured value. The true value is how long it actually took to fall. Is it the true value? I doubt it very much. Uh, we repeat the experiment 10 times and we get these values. Now, looking at these values, can we get the true value uh, from that should say from this data? Well, no, but it gives us a good idea of what the true value is going to be, doesn't it? OK, now, assuming that the ball will take exactly the same amount of time, yes, then the true value is actually what we call an irrational number. Four point whatever, blah, blah, lots, you know, an infinite number of decimal places. That's the true value. It would be impossible to measure the true value. OK, what we can say about our measurements is we can say what our smallest and our biggest value were. Uh, and it's very, very probable that the true value is somewhere in between there, probably. So we can say what the upper and lower limits are based on our measurements. Yes. Uh, and then we can say if we know the upper and lower limits, we can come up with a value for the uncertainty. So the time it takes to fall is uh, 0.43 which is the average, that's the mean value. All we're saying there is that the average value of our measurements was 0.43 plus or minus 0.04. And that's based on looking at the upper and lower limits. When we came up with the mean value, we ignored outliers. We ignored ones which were clearly a mistake, probably. OK, it's all about probability, this. So we state the mean value and we say what the uncertainty is, which is the difference between the mean value and the biggest difference. OK, that's the absolute uncertainty. And from that, we can work out the percentage uncertainty, which in this case is 9%. And hopefully you know how to work out percentages. So 0.43 plus or minus 9%. How might we estimate the uncertainty? Well, I've said one way we can do it is we can look at the, the spread of the values. So these are all the values of my time. We see where the mean is. Uh, and then we say the difference between the highest and the lowest values divided by 2 is the uncertainty. OK, this is called a, this is called a dot plot. Uh, it's one way of doing it, but obviously you need quite a few measurements to do be able to do this. Notice that we are ignoring the outlier. Yes, uh, but sometimes it's an outlier. What, why did that happen? Well, it's probably a, a random error uh, produced by what we call a blunder. Yeah, somebody had a, I'm going to say, a brain fart when they were taking that measurement or they wrote it down wrong, whatever. Ignore it. It's an outlier. It's an anomaly. We use always say GCSE. OK, we can only estimate the uncertainty. Obviously, it's uncertain. So we can only estimate what the uncertainty is. Uh, it should only be one significant figure. So it's it's 0.42 plus or minus 9 percent. 
you wouldn't say plus or minus 9.3 percent you you cannot be that certain as to what the uncertainty is it should only be one significant figure and you should always be generous in your estimate okay if you work it out and it's kind of 0.47 then you say it's 0.5 be generous in your estimate of uncertainty there are statistical ways of doing it um, we don't do standard deviation you will do it in maths okay you'll talk about standard deviation but that's basically what we're talking about the uncertainty is kind of equal to the standard deviation now there's another way of estimating uncertainty and that's to look at the resolution of your measuring device yeah we've talked about resolution uh, now the resolution is the smallest scale division so looking at this ruler that the smallest scale division is a millimeter so we say the resolution is a millimeter uh, and you can say being generous that the uncertainty is a millimeter or sometimes we say it's half the smallest scale division I have seen but you can estimate the uncertainty by looking at the resolution of the measuring device combining uncertainties now this is important okay imagine you're measuring the diameter of a wire and using a micrometer a micrometer has a, a resolution of a hundredth of a millimeter so and you get 0.24 plus or minus 0.01 millimeters what's the percentage uncertainty in the diameter and if you work out the area what will be the percentage uncertainty in the area well now if you're multiplying quantities you add together the uncertainties yes I'll say it again if you're multiplying quantities together then the uncertainties for those quantities you add them together so the uncertainty in the diameter is 4% the uncertainty in the area is 8% because you add them together here's another example the resistance of a component is measured by putting voltage measuring the current blah 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 there's our absolute uncertainties in voltage and current what's the percentage uncertainty and then if you work out the resistance what will be the percentage uncertainty in the resistance very important you can do this slide have a go at it yourself the answer in three two one okay so the uncertainty in the voltage is three percent the uncertainty in the current is seven percent so I say if you're multiplying quantities or if you are dividing them as well you add together the uncertainties so R equals V over I because if you like it, you could be using the biggest value of V and the smallest value of I yes V could be a lot bigger than your average I could be a lot smaller than your average so you are still adding together the uncertainties so 3 plus 7 is 10 so it's 10 percent when we design experiments we should try to minimize uncertainty okay how do you minimize uncertainty well one way is you choose suitable instruments look at these different voltmeters they've got different resolutions haven't they well actually looking at the ones on the right uh, actually the one on the right you'd be able to change its resolution okay uh, the one on the left has the worst resolution at the moment it looks to be about uh, 0 0.1 volts yes so it depends on how accurate you want to be or rather what resolution would be what precision of measurements would be adequate so careful choice of measuring instruments when we design experiments you should always take repeat readings you should always repeat at least once if possible why because your mean value will be more reliable uh, it will 
uh, it will enable us to enter for identify anomalous readings. Imagine you only took one reading and that turned out to be what would have been an anomalous reading. Imagine you only took two readings and one of those would have been an anomalous reading. Therefore, by taking repeated readings, what you're doing is you are minimizing the effect of anomalous readings. Yes, when you work out the average, they will have an effect, but the more readings that you have, the less effect they will have. So you are minimizing the effect of anomalous readings. Uh, and it, you'll ha it'll help you to estimate the uncertainty if you have multiple measurements, okay? Uh, you should choose equipment and methods that would minimize uncertainty to avoid systematic errors. Yes, avoid systematic errors and minimize the effect of random errors. I'm going to talk about systematic and random errors in another video.